What up, fam? Welcome to the first episode of Asking for Mates, where the proven share their process. Today's special guests are iconic, Pacific, out there at all New Zealand hip hop legends, each of over 30 years' experience. 30 years before I was coded. <laughs> Kaz Futiano, also known as Kaz the Fierce Thou Arta, and Bill Rally, known as Kika PC, aka Mr. Majesty. Ooh. They are both multi award winning artists who have taken their craft around the world and they still doing their thing. So pull up a seat, join us at the pallet table as they share their stories that will hopefully inspire you on your own journey. Cheers! Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Cheers! Cheers, Susan. The Makayus say that I'm a little bit too low at my old bike, and that's the whole, um, you know, bird flies, but it all comes back to its nesting roots. And I can't help but feel like with the success of Master, like the world's seeing from the South Pacific here in Aotearoa. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, Thanks, man. they're like, whoa, this has made Hollywood track it back to all of our um, inspirations when we got into it. Because you can only follow the proven people that, that kind of inspire you or show you that it's possible. And it comes back to having OGs in the house like yourself. So it's a huge honor and privilege to have you here. The context of a long career, like you guys have been there since day dot. How, what are your general thoughts about someone hip hop, hip hop in general, music in general? Co okay, master, you go first. Um, hello. I just look at our own progress. You know what I mean? Like, is that whole question? Um, with how do you see someone hip hop or? Well, all I see it is wherever we take it. That's where it's gonna go. True that also. You know, we don't put in the work, we don't play. If we don't exist, nothing else will come, come up from it, you know, or become of it, you know. That's how I see it. So each day, you know, we can cry about where's the opportunity, you know, man, we're good enough. But if opportunity knocks on your door and you have nothing to show, then it's just, how you put it, just air. I mean, for me, it was as, as before us, there was Booyah Tribe, and that was Samoan hip hop. Was there a few cases? Who was the first Samoan rapper that you heard? You know, yeah, like, Booyah Tribe, you know, um, or anyone, you know, like um, any moment you heard, hey, he's part Samoan, yeah. you'd be like, yeah. We, we were happy, we, we were, were happy. happy, you know. Yeah. But Booyah Tribe put it out there, out there, right? Mm. Um, that they, we're the Samoans, you know, they're yeah, gonna yeah. take our culture like that. But we had people that will, um, will keep us in the loop, you know, like um, Sugar Pop. So Sugar Pop is- The breakdance. The breakdancer uh, that connected East Coast and West Coast uh, breaking out, uh, dancing out. Uh. Yeah, they'll take um, New York breakers, bring them over to LA, and they'll take the LA lot, take it to New York. So that's where the connection is, instead of, there's you, there's us, and we'll keep it that way. So he played a very important part in, in that movement of, of dance. I would just say of hip hop, you know, like just of, 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 of dance in general, just like, you know, for, for, for breaking, for, for boogaloo, for anyone, you know, just, I think because all of those dance forms were already there, but him was the connector between both coasts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, before it came to the Pacific, he was, um, you know, instrumental in that, that movement. And I think that's quite important for a lot of our young ones watching because mm. they Sugar don't pop. even know Sugar pop. that part of hip hop. Like they just think of the music, but it's, it, there's a whole culture behind the say. But he's mm. such an important figure. Uh, uh, he was one of the first um, Samoan producer to be working with the Dust Brothers. Mm. So uh, apart from that, he will, he actually helped produce um, one of Buya Tribe's um, song, um, Raid. Mm. So, so um, he would come over to New Zealand at, at you know visit his families and everything like that, and he'll be like, oh, you know, he's blowing up, you know, Biggie Small, you gotta keep an eye on Biggie Small, you know. So he would, he was always that person that will, um, you know, put us in check, you know. Before the internet. Yeah. yeah, we just yeah. when VHS, VHS was still out. For yeah. the young ones watching, I mean, what are the other elements? People, like kids just think hip hop is music, but you guys are talking about dancing before you even talking about music. So oh, yeah. These are the elements. It's, we don't see it a lot these days, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, it's there. Yeah, it's just that you just have to look for it out. It's graffiti, beatboxing, 
breaking, uh, what else, MC, DJing, and you know, they've added a new one, entrepreneurship, hip hop entrepreneurship, into those elements, but. Which you're real big on here. Well, you know, it's like, it, it, the, the one thing for me that I like to say is that for me, is that um, if you ask me where I'm on hip hop, to me, to be honest with you, it was right here. Because there was Booyah Tribe, and then there was this guy, and another guy, Cosmo163, for me, in Wellington. So I'm from Wellington, Kaz is from Wellington. Uh, you know, this is the Brother Phil style. My name's King Carpisi, but before I was King Carpisi, I was Brand Muffin in, in, in a group called Gifted and Brown. And Gifted and Brown used to uh, tour, and we, you know, we're, we're, we're close friends with our, with our we're here in his group, uh, Rough Opinion and uh, Noise and Effect. But also, uh, they were the, one of the first Samoan rap groups for me that I saw. The first dude I saw rapping that I was like, yo, uh, you know, I was a young kid. I was at a nightclub. I was watching this dude and he was like, he was rapping on a keep on moving beat. Uh, and I looked and hello, it was this guy. So, you know, I saw him rapping and I was like, oh, okay, shivers. That dude's rapping. I think, yep, I'd like to rap. I was, I was writing raps and I wasn't performing raps. But I saw him, he was the first dude I saw live. And uh, he had such an influence on my hip hop um, that when I saw him make a, 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 a just a Samoan group, first Samoan group I ever saw that was just hip hop, not not commercial hip hop, not pop, it was hip hop. They were just like one DJ, uh, Rocket V, his name is Viani Se, and Cosmo163. I don't know Cosmo's real, his, you know, real name, but these guys were instrumental for me to be able to go, wow, you can have a Samoan rap group and that's it. So, you know, uh, that's why I got to give it up to my also here because he's like an older brother to me and he's also my mentor. He helped my my rhyme pattern and, and, and style go because he was rapping like no one else was rapping. And he was like, Sole, try this. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll try that. Mm. And so, you know, I, you, when you think of Samoan hip hop for me, I've, I've talked to some other rappers from you know, overseas. Like um, They were like, yo, it went Booyah Tribe, and then after Booyah Tribe was you. But I said, yeah, but before me was these guys. And so that's why I've got to give it up to the lineage of Samoan hip hop for me. And you know, there's a lot of, you know, that have come after us. But you know, like you, I've just got to say, hey, these are the forefathers of Samoan yeah. hip hop for me. If someone is, says, hey, you're a OG of Samoan hip hop, I said, yeah, my lord, but this is my OG here. So, you know, got to give it up to my lord. And the work that he's done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what he's saying? Yeah. So he's like the grandmaster. Grandmaster. Grandmaster yeah. cares. Grandmaster cares. The field style. So, you know, it's, yeah, you know, you know. Well, you know, we've got to give it up, also, because if we don't, other young Samoan, yeah. other Polynesian rappers won't know that it, that it started from somewhere. Mm. And I was, you know, for me, is I, I always believe that Samoan language belongs to all of us, you know, so I like to encourage that and what's possible, you know. And the other thing, too, um, we were doing it before we discovered We Are Tribe, you know. Mm. It just happens that we are tribe came along and like, oh, I wish I was the fifth member or something like that. But, um, but you ask yourself, what can I um, contribute to the, you know, to Samoan hip hop that doesn't exist? And it's to rhyme in your own language or something like that. So I mean, and even like, I mean, your guys, I mean, it's so universal now that there's, there's Samoan hip hop here in Aotearoa which is where masters kind of branched off from. But then there's the Samoans in Samoa doing it. There's the Samoans in America. I mean, you've taken it all around the world. Like, what is your take on in terms of how, you know, we've been practicing hip hop all around the world and where that intersects with our culture? I think the difference is between me, you know, it doesn't matter. We're Samoan, I'm Samoan, you know, like I was born here, but my mum and dad are Samoan. And that's the one other thing that I, I think that we should we should press the issue too. Doesn't matter if you're quarter, doesn't matter if you're eighth, doesn't matter if you're half, it doesn't matter if you're part Samoan, to me you're Samoan. So a lot of our, our of our youth. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's your home. And uh, if we don't follow or acknowledge our ancestry ancestry or our heritage, you get lost. So you know what I mean? Because I ask a lot of kids, hey, where are you from? They're like, oh man, I'm from Monaco. Okay, where's your mom from? Oh, she's from Monaco too. But I say, yeah, but uh, you know, where's she from? Oh, where's your grandparents from? Oh, they're from New Way. I say, okay, so you're New Way. Because mm. what we have to remember is, is, is uh, kids 
that are born, born here in the Pacific, we're not tangata whenua, we're not uh, people of the land. Samoans can go home to Samoa, and also people who are, you know, uh, kids of uh, migrants. You know, we're all kids of migrants or uh, sons and daughters of migrants. That's why, you know, you go around the world and you see what the, the, the problems that all, you know, people that are indigenous are having around the world, you know? So that's why me as a Samoan dude, I always, I side with the tangata whenua first and foremost, is because I'm a visitor. And so if people's heritage is from London or from, from anywhere, England, you know, Scotland, Ireland, you go to Scotland and Ireland, you go to, you know, anywhere, they've, they've been, you know, sort of messed around by, you know, colonization, blah, blah, blah. But that's why I say that if we do not acknowledge the, the you know, the actual first and foremost people here of whichever land you belong to, yeah. You know, we have to, you have to give it up, you know, because we can get lost in westernized world, huh? Mm. You can become, you know, westernized minded. But for myself and, you know, this also here, I'm sure, because we still have a, a village mentality, mm. we're here to serve the village and serve the people of Samoa. I mean, every time I think that we, we've touched the mic, we always lift the, the Samoa flag up regardless where we are around the world. Mm. And that's one of the coolest things too. And I've got to say another thing too, this guy, was the first dude ever that I heard rap in Samoan. Just in Samoan. But also the other thing that I got to acknowledge that Kaz done was that he took the abstract style of the Samoan language, but but of you know, like you can talk abstract in English, but he 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 made abstract Samoan and abstract, I was like, oh, damn surely. That's it, you know, and and that what what I was really interested for me as a rapper, that as Samoans, yeah, I speak Samoan, but my ngangu was not really that good. So I was a bit, little bit fifi to, you know, put Samoan, you know, words into my rap all the time. But now I see and hear Samoans around the world talking our, you know, our, our, our own, you know, language. But he started it. And that's the thing that, you know, once again, if you do not know where it started, it started right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always those ones are. But, um... <laughs> But it's important, you know, um, suffering exists so we can measure ourselves to it. We can improve. If there's something missing in it, we can, um, you know, we can find a way of um, completing it, you know, complete. But it's very hard when there's no blueprint to it, you know, so we have to um, fail, work out what works, what work out doesn't work. I mean, you gotta understand, um, here's a good story. If I, you know, we had a group, we played out outdoor. We didn't never play outdoor. But uh, my auntie and my little nieces turn up. They never seen what I do. They know that I go out at night. My group is really hard, hardcore. You know, if you, you know, all that type of thing that we set out. So outdoor, summer city, families. I see my niece and I go, what are you doing here? Oh, with auntie and everyone. I'm like, oh. Hey guys, can we just um, can we just you know um, not use those words you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, so I go home with everyone's home and she goes, mm -hmm. she doesn't know um, what's that about. And this is the other thing you hear it, but there's a way of listening to it. Uh, now, if I listen to my auntie or anybody else that said, oh man. Would have, been, would have been better off if you went and got a, you know, a part-time at McDonald's. If I went and did that, a lot of things wouldn't happen, you know. The Samoan hip-hop things wouldn't exist. You know, uh, the whole, um, man, we should use our language and our music. It will, you know, it will exist, but it wouldn't be as quick. Yeah, now you, know I mean? you you fast tracked you know, it to 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 where we needed right. it to be, and that's the and that's the thing. Like for anything, you know, it's always hard when there's no blueprint to it. When there was no one else that came before it, so you can go, oh man, I see, I see, I see. We don't have to um, rhyme as fast as that. You know, we can uh, we can flirt with it, hold it back. You know, but it's why it's, it's so important for um, to observe and to see how further down we can go. And we need that, we need a vision. Of you know, that. I was just thinking about the tools, you know, like observing in a blueprint. Like he didn't have a blueprint, but I had a blueprint, it was him. So I could see like he- You were our blueprint. Yeah, yeah, and he was my blueprint. So he had like, he had like books, books and rhymes and rhymes of books. And I've never seen anyone work so hard at lyrics 
than this guy. Like, yes, right, right, right. You know, he gets like, man, he just write, write, write. And so I was like, surely, if my bro's writing like that, I better start writing like that too. So, you know, one thing that's really interesting too, he used to wrap a, write a page. Yeah. He used to wrap a page case. <laughs> so, you know, like if you listen to my first album, I wrote a page because I didn't know the 16 bars, 32 bars, 42 bars. There was no 36, 42 bars. We just wrapped the page. Yeah. And if it, finish, yeah. and if it finishes the, there, yeah, bars. yeah. You know how like most songs will have three uh, verses these days? My song, first songs on my first album, two verses. That's it. And I was like going, okay. Because we, we had no one, you know, we didn't have to follow the, the radio formula at that time. Mm. It was just, you know, we, we're just going to write dope lyrics and we're just going to spit them. And, and, and that was like the main thing I took from, uh, you know, hip hop culture. It was to be original, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. Find your style and, you know, and keep chipping at it. Those are the three things, you know, without, without any rules because everything came down to creativity, you know. How do you see it? There was no, well, you got to have eight bars here, you know, four verses, eight bars, course, course, you know. But that's how, you know, uh, radio mm. is set out to be. But when you get the freedom, just write, you know, mm. tell the story, tell it like how it is. The whole thing about the ultimate, um, you know, level of of songwriting was that just to be honest, write honest music, man. Honest. You know, without that's a big point know. there, man. Yeah, just keep it real, honest to you. Man. Just honest, honest music, man. And that means that there are no um, there are no boundaries to it without, you know, like Ooh. oh man, I don't think Caps gonna like my, you know, just yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I mean. Right. So don't that's worry right. about what I mean, anyone else right thinks. Say, don't even worry. What is it, you know? I think yeah, the, one of the hardest things for me is too is also is that when you hear young rappers, like any rapper, and they're rapping, man, I've got a gun. It's like, really? I was like, shit, you better be have a gun. You know what I mean? Well, we can take listeners to outer orbit. We can take them, you know, out to outer space. But I like it when people, you know, you know, when you think of things, you know, lyrically, you just want to take them somewhere they've never been before. Take them to, you know, let them listen and experience something different, but through your vocals. But I've always been a big sort of uh, a believer and if you're going to rap something let it have truth in it as well yeah. mm -hmm. be authentic so i always you know like it's hard when i say you know like with the new rappers and they're talking they got gun bars i'm like you got gun bars how can you have gun bars when we don't have guns here and if you do have guns yeah my god that's good on you but most people don't have a gun mm -hmm. you know so I, I sort of find that i know it's the the new battle culture within you know but I, i'm like I'm sorry if you ain't got no guns don't talk about having a gun you know, if you're not murdering it or killing anyone, or, you know, like, literally, you can murder MCs, but yep. murdering an MC is different from murdering a person. Mm. <laughs> you know, literally. There's a there's a, there is a difference, you know. But um, I, I always find it that um, I encourage them to tell it to me in another way. I never heard it before. It. Yeah. Like, love, like love stories, hey, it's not a new thing, man. Yeah, yeah, it's been through years. But story. tell me a love story that I never heard before. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's you know, movie. that's it. Yeah. Just anything. Tell me a hood story that I've never heard before. Yeah. How hard your your life is. Man. If you're having a hard time sleeping on the floor, what about the African guys that have to um, gather up dirt to make a pillow? What about that hardness? You know, tell me something in a different way that I feel that make me cry without any reason. You know, because it touches me. So tell me something else. If you want to be the baddest MC on mic, tell it to me in another way. Yeah. You know what I mean? We've been tell it to me. I've seen all the best come up. I've seen them go. Yeah. But mm. tell it to me hey, why. Salute to that. You have, you have been, how, actually, technically, how, I mean, how long have you been rapping? How long have you been rapping, long you been rapping uh, for? When do you start? How long have you been rapping for? How long you been Man, uh, the years I've been rapping for is older than Snare. Hey, how yeah. old is Snare? <laughs> Snare, how old are you? 16. 16? 31. Oh, over 31. 86. Now you can measure. There's two ways of measuring how long you've been. 86. How long is 86? I just want to know just so the number. 2019. Howdy. No, so I've been rapping for 32 years. I've been rapping for 32 years. So I've been rapping, writing raps for 32 years. Oh, so if you've been rapping longer than me, how long are you? I, I want to know that. I, want, I just want to know the number. Because it's must be anyhow. This is how you measure it. You can either measure it from the time you pick up the pen in your room 
or you measure it from the time you played in public. So I'm only measuring it from the time I played in public, where I yep. jumped up on somebody's 21st and said, hey, man, let me spit some rhymes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't measure it sitting in a room and, hey, maybe one day some, somebody will. But that doesn't matter. What matters is looking at your progress. Are you, did you progress, you know I mean, every year? Are you improving a bit mm -hmm. or, or what? What have you contributed? Does it make a difference? That's what matters, you know. So always measure your improvement. That's an important, that's an important one. Really mm. I think the other thing too is also is like 32 years, when I think about, you know, ooh, we should be, you know, you know, when I think about someone studying for something for 32 years, yeah. we should be, oh, we could feel like, we're, we're, we're pretty dope, you know what I mean? But then also your time gets split between different things you have to split to mm. be an MC or be an artist. You've got to manage, you've got to, you know, your clothing label, you've got to, you've got to do, you've got to edit, you've got to direct, yeah. you know, you've got to get your, your marketing happening, you run your advertising. So you, you just grow. I mean, 32 years, when I think of the young MCs now, uh, they, they, we, they are where we are, where, you know, 20 yeah. years ago. But, um, we still have to think worldwide. I mean, because when I said Samoan hip hop worldwide, yep, we've taken Samoan hip hop worldwide, video. and we still are. But that should be the aim and the the dream and uh, what we're actually trying to do uh, for our people, for our small island of Samoa. You know, born in Aotearoa, Tonga to Whenua hard, but also we're Samoan. And so, you know, that that's a, a a big difference for me is that whatever we do, you know. I think that's one thing to say too, you, you know, like you, people out there, you got to remember that Samoans, when you're in Samoa and you're watching the rugby, rugby is our sort of national sport. We, we are all black supporters through and through in Samoa, through and through until you play Samoa. So when Samoa plays with Samoa and so when the all blacks play, we're all blacks, yay. It's the same, you know, but that's our, our dual citizenship that we love both countries, but our heart is in Samoa. And a lot of things too, um, for artists or for, for you know, upcoming, you have to live. Yeah. You know what that is? You have to live, you have to go through, you know, um, outside of your comfortable zone, you know, your comfortable zone. There's a lot going on. There's, um, I always say to the man, if you're gonna get into this, um, what you call business or industry, get burned early, you know. Get burned early so you know how to bounce back, you know. Yeah. So you know there are obstacles along the way because I've seen talented, talented people, talented. They hit that first obstacle. Oh, you know what? And maybe it's not for me. Mm. Yeah. But it, it's it's the difference, man. Because I always believe that 120 percent. You have to be mentally tough. How? How? Mentally tough, man. That's it. That's your existence in this business. Man. When people say they don't rap no more, I say you guys didn't love it as much as I do. Yeah. You know, because I know money, we. It's, passion, yeah, it's like you, you know, if you make money off it, cool. But if oh, if you're gonna rap tomorrow, I know that I know that me and my brother here, we're still gonna rap for in the next twenty years. We, we, it's part of our DNA. Mm. But like when people say, oh, I don't know rap no more, I was like, oh yeah, okay, good, yeah, my lord, you just you gave up. You know, that's not me. Well, it's unbelievable because with all the passion you're talking about your culture, you are now a mainstream face on mainstream New Zealand TV, and you've just kept the real, and yet. You know, it's, it's, it, it's an interesting thing used to be one of the, you know, the brown faces on, on national TV. I think it's it's when we become uh, comfortable in the, in the, you know, just in with ourselves. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like uh, no one is better than anyone else. We're all the same. Everyone's equal. When you when you find that out, you go, actually, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable in, in any of these type of environments that we're in. Because once we, you know, I think us as Polynesians, when the you know through religion and through colonization uh, colonization through our countries, we made the the Balangi do the man, you know. Yeah. So we all like, oh yeah, he's a Balangi dude. Let's trust the Balangi dude. Blah blah. This is just you know life in general. Um, but you know once you figure it out and you go, hey, hold up, nah, we rock too, you know, and and we're strong and we're uh, you know resilient type of people as well. And we can do anything. And that's the thing that I figured out. I'm not fifty yeah. no more. I, I'm not fifty of a CEO. I'm not fifty of a. All they can say is either yes or no. They can either, either help or support us, or they can't. Yeah, and so I think it just goes to show you thrive in the in the outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, you so love we have getting to. outside of your comfort zone. So we have to try and do some stuff that you know that other people have not done before. And I like doing stuff that no no other person's yeah. done before. Well, that's the drive, you know. Um, things that they don't exist, 
that's my joy in doing it. But if I'm doing the same thing that I know the results, it's a, uh, yeah, just another thing. It's boring. It's boring, really. And I think that's it. We get bored easily, mm-hmm. yeah? Uh, and I encourage those who, um, you know, get into music that you gotta really, um, what do you call it? You gotta be involved with every step of, yeah, that's or, you know, of, of your music or any, everything, you know? The, and like you said, a lot of us, uh, we tend to hold back and, and give that trust to somebody to talk for us mm-hmm. or something like that, you know, in the boardroom. Yeah. But it don't, somehow, you know, they never do justice to our... Never. Never. They have to never. Reinterpret- you know what I mean? Like, hey, I got you to wear pink pants. Is that all right with you? You know what I mean? Oh, no, I should have said... But if you were there, you could say, no. I'm not wearing pink pants. I'm not wearing that. Yeah. But, I do wanna, <laughs> but I do want to wear pants. You know what I mean? But I do want to wear pants. You know, you have to meet them somewhere halfway, you know. But it's that thing of giving the power. We don't understand the power that we have. And once we do, you know, figure that out, then you go, okay, cool. Mm. Well, you know, uh, and when we live on an equal playing ground as everyone else, because we see everyone, you know, we, we lift everyone more than us. They're like, oh, no, those cats are better than us. We're in reality... No, no, it's just everyone's different. And, and once we accept everyone's, uh, you know, uh, differences. And you can't fake hard work. Mm, true that. You true know. that also. You can't. Your work ethic is important, mm. you know. So you can't fake it, man. Eventually, they'll pull out your bluff card and say, oh, man, you know, you said you're going to be here at 9 o'clock. But every, this whole week, you've been here 10 past 9. You know, even that slight moment, you know, is important. But this is the thing with us Polynesian, you know, um, unless we see a Palangi shaking our hand, then we believe that, man, you're doing good, brother. <laughs> no, man, I did the same shit when he wasn't yeah. shaking my hand, yeah, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah. But we have to, thing, yeah. Like when you see it on the paper, on the TV, immediately you say, man, he's doing good. I say, man, I do the same thing. I, I strive hard, I work hard. My work ethic is important to me. Work ethic. Was, but, but giving the power to people of influence, you know what I mean? Really? It's like when you think about it, fuck, you know, who cares really? Live your life, make sure that you go see your ainga and you, you know, you pay your bills and, and you know, you don't get chucked out of your house so you, you're warm and stuff and feed your family. Balance I think, it up, man. Yeah. It's, up. We, we put too much emphasis on, on, you know, it's just humanity. But, you know, if you can really just turn the mirror back on yourself and go, hey, what am I not doing? What do I need to do? And actually do it. Mm. I think that's the difference when you, uh, you know, you execute your plan. And most of us are not planned type of people. Mm. We're just like, solely we just go as hard as we can and then we'll see if we can do it. And if we do it, oh, yeah, if we don't, oh, we'll keep on trying. And the other thing, too, we're not allowing ourselves to grow, mm. you know. There's a point where, you, you know, you, to the point where you recognize where that artist is at. You know, and sometimes they don't allow themselves to grow to the next level. They just like, oh, nah, this is it, man. I'm not getting a thousand likes. This is it. I'm not doing good. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it has nothing to do with that. Yeah. You know, it has nothing to do with that. It must be difficult for this generation growing up in social media where that's the validation of their music, eh? Yeah, yeah I, feel for, I feel for, you know what I mean? Like, and just being honest, like, most of the rappers these days aren't the most, but we're MCs, different. There's a difference between lyrical skill and and just not lyrical skill and that's cool but some of these guys that put out songs now and this is just me being as a dude that i got i gotta we, we, we are people music of people of high iq we have a high iq with music and we, we have a very high iq with rap music so when it comes down to if a person comes in with a you know like a f when they're rapping we go sort of they come as at a f and that's where just some of the rappers these days are, are at lyrically yep hmm. So in terms of all the rappers out there, like the tagline for this whole podcast is um, it's, it's asking for a mate uh, and it's where the proven share their process. You guys are legendary MCs. Your pen is as sharp as they get in the world. When you sit down and you've got a pen in, in, in your hand and you've got a blank piece of paper, like what do you guys, what goes through your guys' force field? Like what is... Oh, for me, it's like... Uh... I'm still trying to murder everyone. And that's the thing, as like as a battle rapper, as a as an aggressive type of dude. Um, but that's just lyrically, you know what I mean? Me, I go home, I got my kids, I got my grandkids. Um, I'm just Bill, you know what I mean? But when I'm when I'm King Carpisi, it's a it's a different character. Yeah, you know, it's like switch on, switch on, and you know, and 
But it's weird now because, you know, 25 years being in Kapisi, it just becomes normal as well. And that's one of the other things that I think that is pretty crazy. But as an MC, uh, one of my brothers sitting here, he goes, bro, you killed everyone, bro. You can't kill everyone. Stop killing everyone. And, and in my brain, I said, no, bro, you're wrong. There's new rappers to kill every day. You know what I mean? And, and that's... But that's the, the competitiveness as an MC type of thing. When I grab a, you know, we've started writing on our phones. Writing on phones digitally is still a bit shit compared to a normal piece of paper. I still dig a piece of paper and a pen. You know, um, I, I've still got rhyme books, but now just out of, uh, you know, necessity, I just, because I've only got a phone, so I write on a phone. But still, I'm tr still trying to find ways to slit someone's throat, you know, lyrically without them knowing blah, 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 and, and make it cool. So another MC of my IQ, of high IQ, will go, damn, that's a dope verse. And as long as I'm going, damn, that's a dope verse, I hope that someone else, a dope MC around the world, because I'm not rapping for normal pop, normal people. Yeah. I'm rapping for MCs, MCs. Yeah, cool. So that's what I'm, I'm rapping for. I'm not, and I'm lucky with the songs that I've released. If you listen to every verse, I'm trying to kill someone on every verse, but it just happens to be the music at the back is nice, <laughs> you know. And that's yeah. So me, I'm still trying to, you know, lyrically, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, murder people and, and but shake their hand at the same time. Yo, yeah. yourself, what happens? What happens for you? Well, all I know is that anything that I, you know, there's one thing that Jay Z, Eminem, all your best rappers can't do. Is rapping Simon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So whatever you do, man. So that's one thing I have all on him, you know. So at the same time, too, as to um, when it comes to that language thing, how to flip words mm. that don't exist, or you know, or set a standard, you know, or a level that any upcoming, you know, like every year they always have the hottest rapper, you know, that is coming out, hey man. But when you set a bar, they have to get to it first before you become that. So um, pro, the, the process, um, according to what is given, you know, if somebody say, man, I need a verse on here, I look at the whole landscape of what we're dealing with. Um, how do I make it, everyone brings 5% to it, how do I bring that 5% to make this 100%? You so, know? so when you say landscape, you mean like the beat and the other verses? Everything, that's, yeah, yeah everything. Cheap, See where I cheap. can fit in and make things work. Yeah. When it's my own thing, then I can be selfish, yeah? Mm -hmm. I can be selfish, but make sure it's not something I've already done, you know, before. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, um, I don't want to do it for the sake of doing it. I don't want to be doing it for, hey, man, you still doing it? You're a celebrity. Hey, man, the weatherman is a celebrity. All he does is point to the green screen. That's where it rains. That's where, that's a celebrity. I am a creator, a creative person. True that is. I need to, you know. So when you say legend, I don't want that shit. Like, legends do legendary things. And legendary things has to improve themselves. You know, even though you don't see, so what did you do between this time period and that? Mm. Man, yes, I, I was in the field style, but I was helping develop our own people, our own musical thing. Mm. I don't just, and now I'm going to the bathroom. I'm now, I'm going, you know, you don't need to know what I do every day, man. Yo. But I'm important. He's necessary to the movement of our Music. Oh, I got a question Everyone. too. I got a question too, Case. Like, does it does it piss you off when people go, "Are you still rapping?" It's always. Oh, I'm like, what the fuck? What do you think? You know what I mean, like, that's one thing. Here's like, people out there, we haven't stopped it's, rapping. It's, we haven't stopped yeah. rapping. A lot of people they might start five, ten years ago. Like, we never stopped because I've, I've jumped on stage and people go, "Damn, you still got it." I'm like, "Kill, I never stopped. I never left. I never left. You know, I'm never still left. here. I'm still rocking yeah. around the world. Come I just on now. Kitchen wow. I get back. I, you know, yeah. I never left. Yeah. Like, wow. I just need a drink like everybody else. I get dehydrated. <laughs> I get dehydrated. You know what I mean? I like like how it is. But until that day, you find that there's no fun in it, that I kind of, you know, that um, I have no love for it, then become a gardener, grow the best carrot, you know, do something, put all your energy into that. But right now, you couldn't underestimate my next move because I don't want, you know, that's the whole thing about this game. Once your audience or anybody else know what you're gonna do, then you become boring. What's more interesting? Man, I don't know what this, I don't know what this dude's gonna swap on us. That's the most interesting thing about any artist. Mm. It's like, oh man, is he gonna talk about how hard his life is in the hood? 
okay, man. You know, it's... but also, but also, you know, like for for topics for our rappers, please change your topics. You know what I mean? I think that an album should consist of 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 of, of a different bunch of topics. Ooh. I'll tell you the most helpful thing if you're gonna choose a topic: get your friends, all right, write something, a name, a title, put it in a put it in a can, pick it out, throw it down. There's your album. Okay. Yeah, exactly. um, da, da, da. Oh, how to jump into the moon? Okay, let me from the hood to the moon. You know, yeah. I mean, instead of you. Uh, Drink on the Friday night party. You know, it's like, fuck, how many, you know, how many Ooh, of that? Drink on a Friday night. Keys down road talk. There you yeah. go. Tell us about drinking, the drinking culture, hip hop, man. It's all excess. Let's not pretend, man. What, 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 are, what are you guys? I used to have five shots before I jumped on stage. Like, I was oh. so scared. That's the culture. That's yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, yo, yeah. But no. then after a while, I figured that shit out. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'll just start, I'd like, what would you call it? Like, you get, Tongue twisted because you, uh, hey Cass, here's a question. Have you ever rapped so much that you've, as, uh, here's a question for other MCs, that you've bitten on the inside of your mouth when, while you're rapping? Have you ever done that before? I'm not a biter, but um. Yeah. <laughs> you see where I went to? What do you mean? <laughs> but me and Bill, we have experience where we drink, and I say, Uso. So I just need to sleep before we start, before we start, um, you know, our set. Yeah. But this is the most important rule, man. No matter how wasted or whatever, when it's time to play, you switch. Mm. You switch. But that's the thing. So I think like you that never touch anything. Because honestly, yeah, like yeah, like we were like, "Where's Kaz? I oh, mean, he's asleep." Yeah, you know, just before the gig, and then but when he jumped on, on. But I think that's the thing that most cats uh, that that forget that it's prof it's professional. Because some people they rely on alcohol for the switch on in. Nah, yeah, but but also, but also that people pay to see us. People are there to see you. Have to put on a show. If you don't put on a show, then then it's mm. about repeat business. Yeah. If you can't you show have to them, respect those people's yeah, money. Yeah, it's like yeah. yo. Yeah, yeah, everyone's them money everyone's time. thinking, man, impress me, impress you know, me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and do you know how hard it is to get a babysitter? <laughs> I mean, you, you, yeah, you gotta yeah. respect that. Hard, you gotta hard, respect that hard. time, respect Yo. that money. Mm. They could have went to, you know. They could have gone to the movies where they called war or something, yeah. you know what I mean? And, they could have gone to a restaurant. To watch some guy. They came to watch. All right. Yeah. yeah Pour the drink all over the. Come on. Absolutely. We've seen people jump on stage with with bags of weed we've seen people jumped on with, in all type of states. Like I've got this, like one of the most incredible, um, I'm not gonna say their name, but the most incredible pop bands in the world, pop bands in the world. And and like jumped on stage, we're doing a tour with them and they jumped off. And then the uh, the, the two of the brothers just took off their, their eyes and their eyes were like, gone and i was like i was like boys you guys all right and they were like yo yeah caps well we're good man and i said i'm amazed that you guys can still function while you're on that much because their eyes were so i was like how can you stand do you know what i mean but you know but it just i don't know it's like they were so used to it that they still killed the stage and you wouldn't have been able to tell if you were there on stage but their professionalism got them through the whole stage and now they're one of the biggest pop bands in the world so you know it's You've got to remember, guys, it's not but just because you love rap. Man, we all love rap. But you have to you have to prove and teach the people that are watching you to make them love rap. Yeah. In terms of a lot of what you guys are talking about is like about being responsible and so yes, forth. And just to tie it back to that whole thing about, you know, our urban audiences are, are so into the excess drinking, driving, mm -hmm. all that sort of thing. Yeah, don't, I mean, don't drink and drive. Don't I, drink and drive. The it's fact silly. that, like, you always get invited back to Queensland and you're doing all these amazing things with headlock and all yeah, that sort yeah. of, and you only do that because of a level of professionalism and being responsible well, and all that stage, sort of stuff. And stage, everyone wants to aspire to do that. So, I mean, yeah. Well, that. the one thing is, like, you know, like, we've all drank, you know, during our shows. And I learned that, you know, I tried five shots. And then I was like, oh, that one's not working. Then I tried four shots. Oh, that one's not working still. I was still, you know, not pronouncing my words. Obviously, you have to be really, you know, onto it with your, with your, you know, your mouth so you can be onto it, you know, and wrap the lyrics. So I went down to three drinks and I went down to two drinks. So you actually measure your alcohol intake to get your best performance? Yeah, because like I was on, when, when you're on five shots, I thought I was the man. And so, you know, like, I always yeah. think I'm the man. And I, I asked a couple of people, was I good? Yeah, yeah, you were good. You know what I mean? 
But then when I was sober, when I was sober and I could just went down to zero drinks, yeah. I could actually see how good I was. And also because I could pronounce every, zero every word, zero percent. But, you know, the thing is that you drink after you finish the gig. You do the work, finish the mahi, get the treats. Yeah. And when you get the treats, oh, we're well, just going to chill, have a little drink, you know what I mean, blah, blah, blah. But also uh, sometimes these days, after you finish one gig, you've got to go to the next gig. So, you know, how many rappers out there will have two gigs yeah. or three gigs because we DJ as well. So you've got to, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to rock and DJ, you've got to MC at the same time. Yeah. There's, you know. there's perks that come with it, you know what I mean? And you know, when you're from the hood and there's access drinks, oh man, we're not leaving until it's done. I'll tell you the most, I'll tell you the most, um, Stupid as um, and I, I've seen, you know, and there was a billboard in Samoa. It's a, if you drink and drive, drive slowly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, only in Samoa. So, only in Samoa. So, 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 so what I'm saying is, man, yeah. um, if you drink and, you know what I mean, like, if you drink and drive. I mean, it shouldn't even be drink and drive. It should be like, if you drink, think before you drive, you know. So, um, and there's a responsibility too if you're hosting something, you know that. Like, man, because so many hood hood drink ups say always say you know eating is cheating, you know like. But that's the whole thing about it, man. Harden up, harden up. It's like, oh man. Oh, when we were younger, twenty five years ago, we were those dudes. We 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 we'll go for. We'll go for Superman, yeah. like Superman. Who's the hardest, who's the hardest, the hardest you know? Who's the hardest yeah. man on the planet? And then and we ended up. Oh man, I gotta carry you to your cab, you know. Yeah. I don't want to do carrying people to the cab, you know, the later age. But it's always that whole thing. We don't say, hey, man, are you driving after this? Yeah. We yeah. say that later, you know, when mm -hmm. we're who's, really, who's driving? Oh, so, yeah, shut uh, up, yeah, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, you should have said that. You should have said that in the beginning when you yeah. came to the door. Who's the least sober? You know, yeah. or who's <laughs> the <laughs> most sober? Who's the most sober? Who's the most sober? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, no more. But we always oh, say man. it towards like when you can't argue with anybody that, oh, shut up, man, you know. That stage was just, it's a hard part. Wow, you know, uh, I think for, for us, we just like, having a sober driver is a good thing. Start it off at the beginning, really, you know, at the beginning we of the night. We need to get it from the Yeah, from, from the, the beginning. beginning. And make it normalized too. Not getting to the end, hey, have you, have you got a, um, a, a driver home? You know what I mean? Oh, have you got a license? <laughs> have you got a license? <laughs> then, have you got a license? Hey, at hey. that point, yeah. do you want to argue with a drunken person? Yeah. So we need to see you again for the next drink up. You know, it's important. But to make it, but also be able to look after and go see the people that are with you. You know what I mean? I think that's the thing. You know, look after your mates, you know, and, you know, and look after the people that you went with. Make sure everyone goes home and gets home safely. And the other thing, too, uh, I hate the point where, man, did I have a good time last night? You know, like. You weren't even sure. I, I didn't even know. I don't even remember most of it. What happened last night, you know? It's like, man, you just wasted a lot of alcohol. You, know? <laughs> you just wasted a lot of alcohol. You were just drinking to finish everything off, but you were at the point where uh, apparently I had a good time, right? Apparently. Uh, apparently it's like, man, well, you know, on. like when you think about it too. Oh, it's expensive. <laughs> but most of us are uh, Monday to Friday people. Hey, we'll work from Monday to Friday, and then Friday we're going to party. But you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, that's everyone. You know, we, we work hard, but we're going to play hard. But imagine if we just. You know, like I'll tell you now, like I we we do gigs sober now. Some you know times, yeah. you know, like through the years and through the you know the twenty five years, you know, get drunk, go to sleep, wake up at the hotel eleven o'clock, get on the plane at one o'clock, yeah. still drunk, get home, eat some KFC, yeah. sleep for a whole day. Yeah. So that's been our you know our life for 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 a long time, and you go shivers. But it took me a long time to figure out that I hate the feeling of being sick, sick now. Sorry. I hate the feeling. I'm like, oh, sure, I don't like it. It's that one feeling. of a, an expensive experience, oh you know, going through it and then missing a plate and missing your flight. Oh it's an experience. It's an expensive experience, man. In this industry, there it's a party. I mean, like we are paid to make a party. Mm. You know what I mean? We are the party dudes. Because people, some people ask me, they're like, Sorry, what do you do for a living?" I honestly say I shout at people for a living and they pay me good money. Yo. So you know what I mean? When you think about it, we we are a, we are a party. You know, that's our job. We're there to rock a party. Yo. And if we're not rocking a party, then we're not doing our job. Party around the world. <laughs> but, but that's the difference between the hood party and Queenstown party. They don't pay you to party. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> they don't pay you to party at your hood party. But it's become normal, loose, you know what I mean? 25 years we've been in the industry for, for you know, even a bit longer than that. But it's become normal. I mean, even rapping is normalized now for us. You, you know, someone says, right, rap. We're like, oh, yeah. And we just go at it. It's, it's not, it's become so part of our life that it's normal. And this is the beauty about uh, what we do. We have no reason to go to these places if we didn't rhyme or, you know, or rap or, or because of the music that took us there, you know. So with music, it allows us to discover these places, little towns, um, overseas, different, you know, different places, different people, you know what I mean? That's the, you know, that's what makes it worthwhile, you know, the work that we put into it. Huh? I mean, we put in work. I mean, that's the one thing I say to any, you know, I think we got to go easy on the hood rappers because I don't know, you know what I mean? I, I don't know what the, what, the, what, the, what the issues with the hood rappers are personally myself. It's like I haven't been to a hood and been rapping with, you know, some, but like it, it, it's, it's all right. You know what I mean? The reason why I say it's all right it's because reality. that's yeah. it's everyone's reality. And, you know, to, for us to, you know, I, I just look at them as being young us. You know what I mean? Young us. Yeah. And we've, uh, they've got to go through the experience of the good and the bad, the hardships and the good times to be able to get to where we are. And, and we can look in hindsight, you know, we've, we've yeah. got experience. Yeah. So, you know, if we can pass on the knowledge to these young guys, which is great, and well, that's why we're here. Here's the platform. And here, this is the platform to be able to uh, talk and ask questions. So the next time you hear the next podcast, you're able to send through a question oh, and ask questions. I just want to get through to them that there is more that there is more out there than what is around them. That, that's all I want to say. And to have people that being there and come back and share with them, that's, that's more real. But for you guys, what's the most coolest or inspiring non like thing outside of your reality that you've seen in another continent, country? Like you're like, man, this is crazy. I, knew, I never would have thought I would have been doing I would have been doing this thing here. So probably the most craziest one that I've had, the experience that I've had, I've had four, maybe four or five Samoans, all self-made millionaires. Uh, so sumo dudes, two sumo guys that had won the whole sumo in Japan. So we had Sally the dump truck, we had Fa'amalu, and there was two guys here, and there was uh, Ray Sefo, Mark Hunt, and some other guys all in one room. We were all in Japan, and they were all millionaires. I wasn't a millionaire at that time. And, you know, a lot of times I'm saying that I'm a millionaire now. But it, what was really interesting, that I was like, Sully, all you guys should get $20,000 and give it to me. <laughs> but you know, it was just funny. We were sitting in a small room and we we're just having a met A and and I was the only non millionaire Samoan there and I was like, damn, hey guys. And, and it wouldn't have been help me. Dent, help me no, 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 it was dent. It oh dent. man, it you wouldn't believe dent, we know. we went to some bars and just one bar was on some crazy tens of thousands of dollars just for one bar. And there was there was like twelve of us. It was a, it was a really incredible night. We were in you know we were rocking the K ones and we were traveling around Japan and it was just like really interesting. And I was going okay cool you know. But that's my interesting Samoan you know probably place that I was with other Samoans and it was just like damn fire out these guys are all the bomb they're all rocking you know. And I was like really proud to be a Samoan that night. It was like man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, these these are the type of experience. These are the type of experience I want the hood cats or anybody else aspiring to actually yeah. experience, man. These guys were at the top from of their, top from of their game. From what you put in. From what you put in. They're so, you know, it's brilliant. It's taking us around the world. And that's the thing. And it can also take any other rapper or muso or uh, singer or producer around the world. Music has been uh, has allowed us to be able to see the world. Yourself, you've been in a lot of indigenous festivals and all that sort of stuff. One of the festivals. highlights was to play in England at um, Greenwich, old naval base, the first naval base for the Queen. Playing what's, there. What's a naval base? Well, the naval base, man. It's like where Captain Cook got his, you know, got his. Hey, man, go out there and get as much for the Queen and come back. That's the naval base. Greenwich, old naval base. So there I was performing, you know, just for the Olympic, man. So it, it, they have all sections. 
the Oceana there, yeah, you know. For the Olympics. Yeah, so, but this is um, what my point is. So, old naval base, Greenwich, England, and we're playing there. And the lady comes in to the building and say, just letting you guys know this is where um, Captain Cook um, got his, you know, his orders to go out into the Pacific. And we we're like, <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Captain <laughs> Cook, <laughs> eh? <laughs> Captain <laughs> Cook, I really? Out some matches. We would have burned that place down right <laughs> there, <laughs> That's what I was going to say on mine. <laughs> and the most incredible part about it, I'm going out there to perform a salmon song, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? And you know how when we grew up, we were listening to Public Enemy, yeah, and we go, Which was, what was the song you were Swan Malia. You know what I mean? But this, the most incredible thing, because we grew up with Public Enemy, and remember that um, part where, and remember that part where, um, Flavor Flav, London, how are you? You know what I mean? So, I did the same. <laughs> <laughs> London, my some oh. So, um, things like that, you know, in your mind, it's like, I can't believe this. It's going right around 360, where we, where we were the, that was our drive to actually put our people on the map with the Mo movement. Just acknowledging, man, invest in their own self, you know, in their own people. And now we are here where they sent Captain Cook into the Pacific to discover me. Strathmore, <laughs> Strathmore, right? Just Str me. From Strathmore <laughs> to London, from Strathmore to London. Um, Anything's possible, man. This is the, uh, this is the truth. New Zealand is like the asshole of the world. <laughs> no one comes out. No one comes out here. True quote. And we, and we took everything that who we are. There's a lot of people on our shoulder, you know, mm. that we take. It's not just me performing. It's everybody that came with us, you know. But that was the thing that in my mind. Hey, remember that um, when they went to, uh, you know, the public enemy yeah, went to. Yeah. England, London. Yes, yes. See, the other thing too is like us being heavily influenced by Public Enemy, uh, hood rappers, or anywhere, any rapper, any music, just go out and do your research. Look up Chuck D, look up Public Enemy, and listen to, because they were radical, they were radical uh, conscious rappers. And I think their, their music for, for, for dark black people at that particular time, you know, there were times that brown people, uh, you know, back in the day, we thought we were black. Because there was, they called us black, so oh, you, oh, we're black. But you know, when once we found our brownness, our yeah. Polynesian. But they taught us to find ourselves, mm. you know, find ourselves, and that's the main thing. Find yourself to know your, you know, to know if, to know your surrounding. You that's know true. how how do how do you become something important to your surrounding? Mm. So find yourself. Like like for you guys. Five tracks, artists, whatever, like you'd recommend any any kid out there right now in this bedroom who's listening to this and they're like, man, these are the masters that, you know, these are grandmasters. Like, like you guys have dropped Public Enemy and all these, like, name, name five tracks or whatever and so forth. For me, I, I couldn't that name. That they can, they can look up and For me, the most, the most important part, I cannot recommend you five tracks to go down because that's the five tracks I go down. For you, you have to keep your mind open to everything you listen to. Don't do this. I only listen to West Coast rap. I only listen to the New Yorkers. They keep it boom, bap, they, they, they keep it that way. I want you to listen. That's it. Listen. So, because there's an automatic thing in you that will tell you, I like that. Or I, I don't get it. But there's something in everything that I like the energy that these, you know, this rock band is giving off. I love the way that Alton John's melody, why is it still around? Why is it catchy? There's always something that you will learn and apply to your art. But I couldn't tell you five that I, hey, I need you to listen to them. Five? Five is small, man. I want you to listen to 500, 5,000, 5 million. That means open your mind up. There is no boundary or no nothing. Sorry about the question. <laughs> <laughs> For that, you gotta eat that carrot. <laughs> For that carrot. Um, so what's the five million? Uh, 
lucky. It was You've been that, tracking all of that since day dot. Well, you know, like I went to America and was in New York and they said, hey, uh, are you a rock dude? I was like, yeah, we, we you know, we, I, I made a rock track and they said, are you a reggae dude? <laughs> yeah, I made a, you know, I make reggae and they were like, are you a drum and bass dude? I said, yeah, I, I rock drum and bass too. And they were like, well, Americans here are too dumb. They don't, they can only, you know, you have to pick hip hop or no other brand. And I said, but in New Zealand, we listen to everything. And so because I put that all on my albums, they couldn't actually fathom and they were like, yo, they said, dude, you have to just make a hip hop. I said, that's cool. Um, but for me is, you know, I've been rapping for 32 years. We've been, you know, released three albums, working on the fourth and fifth album. But, you know, for a change and because I get bored, I've just started my new brand called Mr. Majesty and it's just reggae and dancehall. So um, you know, as a as a as a as a as an artist, you know, like I, Bill O'Reilly is my real name, and but I still make Bill O'Reilly tracks, King Carpisi tracks, Mr. Majesty tracks, and we've still got you know, um, I've got uh, headlock tracks that I'm doing with Shay Fu, and um, we're, I'm producing and um, mixing for my wife's album. So um, you know, we're, we're we're doing a lot, and um, but you know, it's just keeping yourself not bored, really. You know what I mean? You just. Man. So we just don't get bored. Should I say to them, which part of creativity don't you understand? Ah, uh, true that. Also. Which true part that. of it? <coughs> mm. Yeah, I think... You know, like... Yeah, yeah. Bro, there, there's no rule to it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's Because once you put barriers on yourself, that's like, man, I'm oh, a... Which genre are you Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it the circle, the triangle, yeah. or the square? Yeah. It's just music. And so maybe, you know, you're like, if you like music, I love classical. I know you love classical tools. You know, I took piano lessons when I was younger. But you know, like every rapper, every producer, every whatever trap artist, every vocalist has to listen to a, a multi, you know, dimensional type of music so they get music in, you know, as it mm. in general. Sorry, bringing up the classical and that. You see, this this is the story, man. Um, school. We're, we're heading into the school cert. So, you know, we've been learning music. We've been learning music. So, you know, these are special, you know, specialized, you know, um, you know, subjects. So we are given our envelope to take home to mom and dad or auntie, you know. So, you know, so I'm open it up, see what it is, you know. And my music teacher goes, uh, just want to advise you about your, you know, your son and nephew. They, he shouldn't be taking music next year. I don't advise you to, for him to take it. Yeah. Now, if I listen to my music teacher, <laughs> yeah. do you think we'll be sitting here, t you know, talking about music or anything? Mm. You know. So a lot of things, man, is you weigh it up. You know, how much do you love it? In terms of just to wrap up this segment downstairs before we head upstairs and we have a feed and we finish up on the on the table. Final closing remarks. Uh, the main thing, I was just like you, you know, and I wish somebody like me came along. And that's the whole thing about it. Um, it. Hard work is hard work. That's what I'm saying. You gotta put it in, you gotta sacrifice. And like everything else, man, there's always obstacles along the way. There's always. But that's the difference. That's what makes you good or great. There's a difference between good the and difference. great. Difference, big difference. Yeah, you know, like on the music buzz, just on the work ethic, it's like when you drink, if you're if smoking weed, if you're if you're doing something, if you if you're taking something, we, that mind state you go into is is Wonderland. You can go visit Wonderland, but you can't live in Wonderland. And so to to actually you know get the work ethic and finish things up, things off, uh, you have to be out not in Wonderland to be able to finish off those projects. So um, get those you know, goals. Get, get those, those goals, goals. Finish it and aim just well. Wide. Small goals, man. Small goals is like make sure I wake up early tomorrow as small as that man and also um you small know be a that. be a person of integrity if you're going to say you're going to do something do it uh you Good know practice. that's that's ooh. what does integrity mean integrity means uh, basically it's um it's how you 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 uh how, how, how would you say it? it's how, how you, hold you yourself yeah how you your value system yeah it's like know what others Put on you, but that's your value. Well, it's that yeah, respect you it's, have for yourself. Yeah, yeah. We gotta, you have to respect for yourself, you know, and that's the main thing. I think also respect your parents. Make sure that you know if you know, hey, parents come first. You know what I mean. And here's one thing: is for our kids out there, they wipe our asses when we grow up. So we better wipe our parents' asses when they grow old. So never ever put your parents into a into a into a. Uh, 
old people's home because that's not us. So, you know, you go see your parents until they pass and, and then that's what's going to happen with your kids when they grow up. So that's what I say on a village point of view. You know what I mean? That's where we are people of the Pacific and we're people of villages and, you know, we're and people of the migration. Yourself. And respect yourself, respect your family, and also respect your family and friends and, and, and tell them you love them because sometimes you might not be here tomorrow. You have to tell them, you know what I mean? Don't, oh, man, I should have told them that my also that I love my daughter. should have told my dad I love him. should have told them. But tell them now because people need to be acknowledged now. And and thank you very much also to, for to be able to acknowledge two, two hey, sort of, you know, OGs like saying, us. Thank you. I love what you're doing here. Yeah, also, and I, we, we love what you're doing, also, you know. Um, but also here, you know, like, because Master has done something for the Samoan culture and for Samoan hip-hop that, that has not happened before. So also, thank you for making the track for, for us to, you know, to well, to yeah. uplift our, you know, our, 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 our Samoan hip-hop. Possibility, and, yeah, you know. We, we, we always watch Hollywood. Yeah, 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 you know what I mean? We always watch Hollywood. Thank you. Get on that real yo, to yo. camera is on. Yeah, it's never happened. Isn't it interesting that Master is a byline in this conversation? Absolutely massive, but in the greater context of things, it's, it's been this, we're just on a continuation of what we've been on. We've always um, been there. It was. Um, it wasn't like, hey, The Rock has got a movie. We yeah, better. We, now, we better make a movie. We, we, yeah, we better make that music. But it's so important that when opportunity comes knocking on your door, have something. You have to be you ready. You have to be man. ready. Mm. Stop complaining about man. When are they gonna discover us, man? When they come to discover you, hey, we've been. Doing we've been since the past 20 you guys years. are late. You know, Older you should have been here still. ten years ago. <laughs> That's the whole thing. And who are we? We're not the only Samoan musician in the world. No, There's no. a lot in America, Hawaii. Heaps. So we look at that. It's like, and when I it's love, game time, it's game time. And I love what you just said also about our parents. parents. Look after your parents first and foremost. That's it. And, your, mean, you know, that's it. and your kids. And, and that's the thing. We love to respect love others. Kids, yeah. Yeah. yeah, We love to respect our, you know, our home, everything else. But how can you respect that and you can't even respect your own parents and, and, and family in that way, you know? So start from somewhere, it's real easy, man. It's real simple. Freaking do music for you. Do music for you. Don't do music for anyone else. Don't worry about if you like it, hopefully someone else likes it, but make sure you like it make first. Make sure you like it. Yeah. Because if you're making it for somebody else yeah. and they don't like it, then you're stuck with it. You're trying to cater to other people. Yeah. Right? You're, you're stuck people with it. Somewhere. And that's not what you want to make. So first thing first, make it for yourself. Hopefully, you know, they love it too. And good music is good music. Yeah, good music is good music. On that, man. Good album is a good album, no matter what year you release it. Look at Bob Marley. Good album is a good album. On that note, cheers, man. Make sure no one's driving home. Yeah, hey. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the Uber. I'm catching Uber, man. All over for the Uber. Sorry.